And thank you for some great discussion on that. Um, and that might be a good segue into the next question, talking a little bit about typing. So what are some of the challenges that students are facing whenever they're learning to type the Cyrillic alphabet? And Heather, since you were just talking about that, we'll start with you, please. Um, so typing in Russian, I mean, obviously, right, we've got a, a different alphabet they're dealing with. Um, what I do is provide students with um, resources on how to install or, you know, download a Russian language keyboard. And there are, of course, options you can uh, you can use the traditional Cyrillic layout, Russian Cyrillic layout, or you can use a phonetic, Russian phonetic keyboard, which is what I use. Um, and it, as most everyone here knows, right, it aligns with the English character. So the way a Russian letter sounds will align with the English character. So like Russian P will be where English P is on the keyboard. So if you know how to type in English, it's almost intuitive. And this is the one that I encourage my students to download. But what I find every semester is that nearly half of the students choose to uh, install the traditional Cyrillic keyboard and usually order um, Cyrillic stickers to, to put on their keyboard. Um, to learn the traditional layout. They're they're more comfortable just starting from scratch. Um, and like I was saying, as far as, uh, you know, recognizing Cyrillic letters, we really focus on that first, kind of this receptive or, or passive knowledge at first, learning to identify what the letters, the sounds the letters make. We do that for a couple of weeks before I start requiring any sort of input on uh, the student's part. Um, using the keyboard to give them time to to install or to download and then to kind of practice. Um, it's it's tough. Um, one of the, I guess the biggest challenges I run into, especially in the first year and the first semester Russian, is that a lot of students will, instead of learning the keyboard, instead of um, getting into it, is they will copy and paste. Um, from text that I've included in in quizzes and uh, in lessons for their answers, they will just copy and, and paste. And so to to get them to not do that, um, well, and I would do this anyway. Really, is I include stress marks because stress is is very important in Russian. I include stress marks on all of the Russian words and in all of the text that the students see. Um, and when they copy and paste, especially into our LMS, into Canvas, um, it will include a stress mark and Canvas won't recognize the stress mark and we'll, we'll kick it out and count it wrong. Um, so this is kind of one sort of like built in way I've, I've got to deter students from copying and pasting um, and, and actually learning to type. Um, but that's one of the biggest challenges is just to keep them from doing that. Definitely. And I can see where you would run into that quite a lot, especially for those first semester students that might be struggling enough with the language in general. And then there's that extra layer of typing. But I like how we're kind of using Canvas features to our advantage and really encouraging them to jump in and use the keyboard. Thank you. Uh, Shannon, same question, uh, talking about uh, typing and uh, telling us a little bit about how uh, you teach typing and what kinds of things are students maybe going to struggle with if they are using a Cyrillic keyboard. Yeah, I'll just echo uh, some of the things that Heather was saying about um, the choice between the standard layout and the phonetic layout uh, of the keyboards. And it's kind of an interesting thing because um, my own experience is that when I started learning to type in Russian, you had to get a whole bunch of special fonts and things on your computer. <laughs> and so um, I learned on the phonetic keyboard and I still, still type using the phonetic keyboard. But the interesting thing is I really regret that. And I wish I typed using the standard layout. And you should, you could, you should say to me, I should learn it and I should, but now that I have uh, the other habit, it's really hard for me to, uh, to switch to a different, um, 
keyboard layout. So I use the Fanatic, personally use the Fanatic layout, but in, in many instances, I have regretted that because if I were on a computer that wasn't mine, uh, in the past, it would be that the standard layout would be the one that you would be able to get to. Uh, or um, even now on my phone, the layout that uh, comes with uh, my phone is the standard layout. And so I'm really, really slow at texting in Russian because I'm not that well familiar with the standard layout. So um, because of my own experience, up until maybe recently, uh, and maybe even now, I can't, maybe I haven't decided for this year yet, but um, I have always required my students to learn the standard layout. And um, I gave them a website, which I forget if I included in my in my resource list, I will um, put it in the chat if I didn't, but um, I used a, a typing lesson website that's called SenseLang, it's like senselang.org slash typing. Oh, thank you, I did. <laughs> um, so Jim put it in the chat, thank you very much. There are other ones out there as well, but that's the one that I've been using for a long time. And it has 16, I think it's 16 lessons and you learn basically two letters at a time. So first you learn these two and then you learn these two and then you add these. Um, and so I try to make the argument to my students that, you know, uh, the standard layout uh, is more accessible in many ways, and that if you have it on your phone, that that's going to be the layout that's probably going to pop up. And also the standard layout, I think, can be faster if you get really good at it, because it's not built like QWERTY, which was on purpose to slow people down. Um, it has the most common letters right here, O and A. Um, I'm starting to rethink that, however, because uh, it is true now that number one, you can get phonetic uh, keyboards pretty easily. It used to be a lot harder to get phonetic keyboards and it would be the standard one that you could get easily. Um, so that has changed. And the other thing that has changed is that I think it's a lot more rare for people to use other people's devices at this point. So where it used to be that like when I would be in Russia, I would be using like a, an internet cafe computer, right? And then that would make it very difficult for me to type. Um, that is changing. And so it may be that it's time for me to think about whether I don't require anymore the standard layout, but you know, still sort of make the argument to my students about why I wish I had learned the standard layout and then let them choose on their own. I'm still sort of thinking thinking about that, but that uh, standard layout is what I used to always teach them. And I used that website called senselang.org. Like I said, I start teaching them typing pretty early. It's like in chapter two of our textbook, which is in sort of the second third of our first semester. Similar to Heather, in the very beginning of the semester, we have a lot of sort of drag and drop things where students can do it without typing at first uh, as they're still learning uh, the letters, uh, et cetera. But I do start having them type pretty quickly and I try to, I, I have encountered some of what Heather's talking about with co copying and pasting. Um, and that's an interesting, uh, an interesting, deterrent, uh, idea for deterrent, uh, Heather. Um, but, you know, I try to make the argument to them that, you know, you're really going to need to to do this. Um, it's going to be, you know, included in your tests. Um, and so, you know, avoiding it now is just going to make it harder later. So, and I think many of them um, see the value in being able to type because that sort of opens up a whole new world for you and, accessing the Russian internet, et cetera. Yeah, there's actually, there's a great comment in the chat from Natalia uh, talking about how she learned to type English first and then learned how to type in Russian, but it was a frustrating experience. And it sounds like, and correct me if I'm wrong, Natalia, but it, it's, I remember learning to type as a child and it was something I struggled a lot with. And it's really important to kind of let students know this is the argument for using this keyboard layout versus the other and and kind of making an informed choice and also just maybe based on what they're best able to do if you're like me and you kind of have the struggle of, of typing and learning something might be harder than absolutely we kind of need to let the students choose i think so lots of things to think about on that topic too thank you both very much 
I want to shift the conversation a little bit and talk a little bit more about scaffolding and especially that uh, Russian is not a language that uses the Roman alphabet. We might often need to resort to scaffolding to make especially those authentic materials something that our students can really use and, and sink their teeth into. Uh, 